Good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church. This is Sunday School on January 29th, 2023. And we are in a series talking about how to discern the voice of God. And last week we talked about does it line up with what the Bible says. This week we're talking about does it bring conviction so the voice of God seeks to convict us of the truth. And the primary way that God speaks is when he convicts us of our sin. He loves us so much that he doesn't want to let us rush headlong into sin without calling us to repent and return to him. So let us pray. Lord, again, we come to you asking for your help asking for the Holy Spirit to help us understand what your word says. And I pray that we will respond uh, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> well, in Acts, here in chapter 2, uh, this was after the crucifixion. And, uh, of course, Jesus had been raised from the dead. And uh, we have Peter here speaking to the Hebrew people. And he says this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and and Christ. So all of the house of Israel were the all of the lines all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, and of course his son Jacob, who were the twelve, the twelve tribes. So we know 
what had happened at the crucifixion that the uh, that the Jewish leaders were the one that made the plot to kill the Messiah. They didn't know or understand who he was, even though they were told many times by the Savior who he was. So, when God speaks to us, he speaks about his concerns and his, and his priorities. And he, he wants us to know what is on his heart and he invites us to join him in his work in sharing his word and he wants us to be in a right relationship with him and for those that are not following him his focus is on seeing them come to know him as their savior to understand that they are a sinner we all are but we need to turn from our sin and place our faith in the work that was done by our Lord and Savior where he shed his blood, the only blood that could pay for our sin. And he was seen after, after, the, res uh, after the resurrection by over 500 people. And of course, by the disciples who were eyewitnesses of this. And so, here was Peter saying to them, you crucified your Messiah. Acts chapter two starts out uh, with the coming of the Holy Spirit. And that's when uh, there were uh, 120 people in the upper room and uh, that's when he started to preach. But it was at at the Feast of Pentecost where there were a lot of Jews there in Jerusalem. Uh, the normal population was around 55,000 and uh, uh, during the Feast of Pentecost uh, there was uh, about 180,000. So he was preaching to a lot of people and uh, he preached about the resurrection and Jesus being the one that was supposed to save all people, which is what he came for. Not only the Jews, but everybody. And they were the ones that caused the crucifixion. But the disciples uh, 
they were eyewitnesses uh, to the resurrection and we can know that what they said was true because he was preaching about his own personal well his personal experience that is exactly what he saw and that at that time God sent the Holy Spirit and while he was preaching there were many different Jews there from uh, over the known world and they were hearing hearing the word of God in their own language and it, I don't know there was at least 15 or 16 different countries there and they were hearing it in their own language. That was a God thing. Uh, Peter also cited Psalm 110-1, where, where David himself actually prophesied about the coming Messiah. And it was one of the uh, favorite passages in the early church. And it, it can be found in Mark 12, verses 35 through 37, 1 Corinthians 15, 25, Hebrews 1, 13, and Hebrews 10. 13 and it uh, calls Jesus the Messiah the Lord and the Savior of all so he was preaching to him so Peter reached the climax of his sermon and he said, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ. And he spoke very firmly. They were complicit by their sin and rebellion against God. And they rejected the Messiah. So he was actually preaching very hard to them. When God speaks, he uplifts his son and the work of his son. And the Holy Spirit also convicts of sin. Peter was saying that they were enemies of God. When God does speak to us like he spoke to them, he will 
He will talk about our sin in our life and our disobedience to his word. So God will point out anything in our lives that are hurting our fellowship with him. So God knows what's important in our life and he will speak to those issues. And uh, it is the role of the Holy Spirit to reveal and apply God's truth to our lives. John 16, verses 13 through 14. So let's see what happened when he was preaching in Acts 2, 37 through 38. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter told them. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. So, he preached and his words call, called for a response. This is one of the situations where you can't be neutral. You either accept the Lord or you reject him. They were under conviction. They were pricked in their heart. They understood that they had crucified the Savior. Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit came that he would convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment in John 16, 8. We each have a sinful nature and are inherently evil and rebellious against God. We don't do what's right very naturally or good. But because of God sending his son, we can have those sins forgiven. So at here they acted right then. They acted immediately. And they asked what they should do. And so Peter told them exactly what they should do. Satan will try to make us, you know, feel guilty, uh, feel guilty, yet not offer any way to solve the problem. But God, on the other hand, he will convict us, but will offer a remedy uh, for the problem. Words from Satan leads to guilt and shame, but words from God leads to 
repentance and life. So Peter told them to repent, that is, uh, to confess their sin and their wrongdoing and turn their lives in a different direction. And then he told them to be baptized. And that's an outward sign of an inner change in us. It shows that we are a child of God, that we have died to our sinful nature, and that uh, being baptized uh, is a, it's a public uh, confession of our faith, and it uh, shows us as going through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord, and we are raised to a newness of life. So he said that they would receive two things. First, they would receive forgiveness uh, for their sins. And he assured them that they would be forgiven and restored through the work of our Lord and Savior. And secondly, those who repented of their sin received the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate gift and we have him living in each of us that are saved when we trust him as our savior and with him we have every resource of God and it helps us to do God's will. Well, let's see what happened when they understood that they had done a bad thing when they when they killed the Savior, but he was resurrected. Verses 39 through 41 says this, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this, un from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Peter offered them hope and encouragement. Satan will do the opposite. He will discourage you and lead you to the place of hopelessness but God wants to save you from your sin and give you eternal life. He brings hope. And whatever his word says, whatever he has promised will come true. It will be 
fulfilled. So, the scope of God's promise of, of salvation is for all who will believe and trust when God calls. And it wasn't only for those that are or were right there at that time, it's for all of us. We all can repent of our sin and experience being saved. This was good news. So, Peter, he was saying, save yourselves. This is a fundamental need for everyone. And when we finally understand that we need to be saved, the Holy Spirit urges us to be saved. So, here the result was around 3,000 being saved. But he told his apostles that they would do even even greater things than he had done. And that is because those that were saved had the Holy Spirit in them and they were going out and sharing with others. So the focus here uh, is uh, to discern the voice of God and we do that through his word and if we are convicted we need to respond and uh, even even those that us of us that are saved we still sin and and the lord will convict us and expect us to respond to him so the first thing is uh, to receive jesus as our lord and savior and the way we do that is we confess our sin. And so we have the Holy Spirit in us and he works to help us learn and grow. He's a teacher, but he also will convict us when we are in a situation that we shouldn't be. And then he wants to work through each of us. He wants us to share his word and uh, to share with others uh, the opportunity for them to trust in God. And his son and the salvation that he provides so let us pray again our lord and god we thank you again for your word we want to learn more about you through the work of the Holy Spirit 
We want to trust you with our lives. We want to give our lives to you and allow you to lead. And I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.